Hey guys, welcome to Tuesday Connections. Today is Tuesday, April the 6th. May the grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. I hope uh, you were able to join us for Easter services on Sunday or at least got a chance to catch our services online. It really was a wonderful day. A lot of thanks go out to our worship team, Gene Chesser and Kathy DuBose, and all the volunteers who helped uh, put everything together, and additionally to our staff who worked tirelessly for the last two weeks just to get every everything in order, all of the details that have to come together. So many people pulling hands together, the music, the choir, the praise team, the ushers, the deacons. Thank you so much for everything that you poured in. It really was a wonderful celebration. We look forward not only to celebrating Easter next year in a more full capacity, but maybe even soon um, more people being back to, to worship together. We're, we're looking forward to that. <clears throat> Today I want to talk about a little bit about um, uh, brokenness. And, and even after Easter, how hard it has been uh, for, for some people. Before we get there, a couple of, uh, a couple of announcements. One, uh, our starting points class is starting up this coming Sunday. If you have been a part of Eastminster, you've been worshiping with us for a little while, uh, or maybe you just want to find out more about the church, we're going to be meeting between the services at 1015 in the parlor. Uh, each Sunday for the next three weeks. That's 1015 in the parlor. Would love for you to come out. I'm going to try to touch base with folks this week, but uh, would love for you to come out on Sunday and um, yeah, find out more about the church and maybe take the steps towards becoming a covenant partner. Additionally, this Sunday, our second to fifth grade students have an opportunity to take a class on the sacrament of Holy Communion. Uh, that's a class with Miss Kelly. It's going to be a time of understanding and learning about this sacrament. And it's going to be capped off with our communion service on, uh, on Youth Sunday on May the 2nd. Uh, after going through this class, our students are going to be invited to take communi communion in a new way because they're going to have a new understanding of what it's all about. And that takes us to May 2nd. That is Youth Sunday. That is coming up really soon. I want to encourage all of our covenant partners to, to come to this worship service. This is, um, this is a time to really rally around our teenagers. Uh, our teenagers have had it difficult. Everybody's had it hard, but especially our graduating class last year and this year, it's been a very, very difficult year. And so we wanna, <clears throat> we wanna rally and support our teenagers and let them know that we are family and that we love them and support them. And so make plans for May the 2nd. That's a 10 a.m. worship service. And there's going to be a food truck and fellowship afterwards. Uh, it's going to be a great, great day. So make plans for that May the 2nd. And, uh, and that's going to be great. Um, oh, last thing. <clears throat> My family, over the pandemic, I don't know if you know, but there was a, um, a new series on the life of Jesus and his disciples called The Chosen. I promoted this early on, and uh, I think I really think you should watch it. You can find it on YouTube. You got to go to YouTube and search "The Chosen." I believe in the first season there are eight episodes, and it is a wonderful, wonderful um, television series on the life of Jesus and his disciples. It's just such a great look. Uh, it really brings out the humanity of Jesus without taking away, uh, you know, his his divinity as well. But season two started on Sunday. And so if you, if you had already watched The Chosen, you loved it, uh, they, they've, all, they've released the first episode of season two. My family watched it last night. It's so good. It's inspiring. Uh, and I just want to encourage you, if you need that uplift, to, to take a look. So I have, um, I have noticed and I've actually been in conversation with several people uh, in our community and in our, in our orbit that are really going through a hard time. And I think one of the things that the Lord is laying on my heart is that we are a, um, we're surrounded by broken people. Uh, people are really going through it from, from um, divorce to, uh, to relationship issues, from job loss to job changes that make it harder to, to work. Uh, people have gone through illnesses. People have lost loved ones recently. The grief, the, it's, it's, for some people, this has just been an overwhelmingly difficult period of time. And I'm noticing it more and more with, with more people. And maybe you're one of those people today, or maybe you know one of those people. And I just want to point you to Jesus today. 
Um, Jesus understands all of our uh, all of our difficulties, all of our brokenness, all of our trials, and he specifically points this out in Matthew chapter eleven. And I want to share with you a verse from Matthew chapter eleven today as a, as a means of comfort. Um, maybe maybe that you need the comfort, or maybe you need to know where this verse is. This is Matthew chapter eleven, verses twenty eight and twenty nine. Jesus speaks to his disciples, and he says, "This come to me, come to me, all you who labor." and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A lot of times when I think about rest, I, I, I just think about taking a nap, <clears throat> just resting from, from everything that's happening. But sometimes it's, it's not just sleep that we need. It's really, we just need a break from all of the drama, we need a break from thinking about the difficulties. And Jesus is what gives us that. When we delight ourselves in him, he gives us the desire of our hearts. He focuses our hearts. He gives us peace. In his mind is steadfast, stayed on the Lord. He gives peace, the prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah 26. So I just want to encourage you to come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Focus your mind on him. Uh, maybe even look up uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, which tells us the things that we should be thinking on in order to, to experience the joy of the Lord, even in the midst of brokenness, even in the midst of hard times. So if you're going through brokenness, come to Jesus. If you know someone that's going through brokenness, then point them to Jesus and point them to Jesus through Matthew chapter 11. God bless you, friends. Love you, and I hope you're doing well, and we'll see you soon.